there seems to be a lot of depth back in that time. And what I mean by that is, is despite all the normal and average media hype, what I think one area that a lot of people haven't touched on is the fact that you were friends. They were brothers. They were friends. It's, it, they're not just, just jujitsu grandmasters that run around trying to show everyone what they do. They're people. They're human beings. So there's a lot of empathy and there's a lot of emotions and things that are evolved in their daily day-to-day uh, daily, day -day lives or whatever. I mean, how did their emotional um, uh, education and their spiritual beliefs and things like that influence your life or impact you at that early age in those formative years? Um, there's a lot to say for that. Okay. Um, one of the things that I admired and appreciated about most was we would have to clean the entire academy. And we, I mean, I'm talking every little crack, corner, leaf, everything. Everything was spotless. It wasn't just learning how to teach jujitsu, it was learning how to run an academy, learning how to deal with people, learning how to do all kinds of things that evolved around the teaching. One of the things that I really appreciated most when it came to cleaning day was we weren't just told what to do and given a list of stuff. Yes, we were. We were soldiers and we did what we were told. But more importantly, when it was time to clean the bathrooms and clean everything up, on Sundays we'd all go into the academy and we'd make that thing shine to the point where you can eat your breakfast on the bathroom floor or on the toilet. That's how much we'd clean it. But you know who was right down there next to me scrubbing toilets? Hoist Gracie. Everybody was involved. It wasn't you or you because you're, you're special. It wasn't like that. Everybody's down on their knees scrubbing cracks. I mean, just the bathroom tiles. We're scrubbing it. Everything. Everything was perfection. And the reason why was because Horian instilled that in us. He instilled it in Hoist and he instilled it in us. More importantly, when Elio would come into town, I know who instilled it in Horian. Mm -hmm. It was Elio Gracie. And he reaffirmed that and instilled it more into us. Nothing special. We just have something that works. We pride ourselves on not being the toughest guys in the world, but to prove to the world that we have something for you that works with devastating effectiveness, and we have it down to a science with a step-by-step -step approach. Mm -hmm. And it shows in everything we do, from, from scrubbing toilets to mopping mats every day, to making sure and providing the best that we have for students. Not just giving them perfect technique, but giving them a way of life, a way to eat. I used to be with the Gracie and Diet, and I used to be with the blender. I used to be behind in, in, in the Gracie um, um, behind the counter, making all the the, the shakes and the, the Gracie Diet for people and selling it to people. And that was our job to run the academy. I would give tours. I would make shakes with the Gracie Diet, so it'd give them a better way of eating and living, and, and show them a better way of life. And we'd always be joking around, having fun, because if something is not fun. It's your, now you're enduring something. Life, like I said, is meant to be enjoyed, not endured. So the more fun you're having, the more fun you're creating for that environment and everybody else in it. And if you show them a good lifestyle and a good way of doing things and a way of life, I think it rubs off. And I, I believe it rubs off. And it, there's a lot of good to come out of the okay. YouTube. And uh, of your influences or, or uh, instructors, previous instructors, who did you, uh, who was the most insightful and who was the most fun? Out of all my instructors? Out of all. Yeah. Um, they all offered their own unique, special piece that put me together. And um, I have a lot to say about every single one of them. Um, but Horian Gracie's message to us that stemmed from his father was probably the biggest impact. Um, because I find myself saying things verbatim and so do everybody else even after 15 years later and um, going into the museum and telling, because I, I used to listen to Horian's stories about the Gracie family and because we'd have new groups of people coming in every week and every day all the time. And sometimes we'd run camps and things like this. So I would have to listen to the stories that they've told everybody for years and years, but on a daily basis. And pretty soon I became like a parrot. <laughs> you want to know anything, I can tell you anything. And it's verbatim. It's just like, and, and I didn't realize this until years later, and some of my students pointed it out. And it was just like, it was like listening to you, listening to a, 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 a Horian speak. And I was just like, I couldn't believe it because I had to agree they were right. And I almost thought, hmm, was I brainwashed? Or was <laughs> But the message was loud and clear. And, I, and, and each and every year, especially now, I understand so many more valuable points that were put across to me that make me a better teacher today. 
And I have to say that about my, my, uh, my professor now, Higan Machado. They offered me a completely different side of Jiu-Jitsu, a different element. Mm -hmm. The Machados, when I went to the Machados, the difference between the Gracie Academy, that I, one of the big differences at the time, was the Gracie Academy, we competed against each other. So nobody wanted to share information. Mm -hmm. When I went to the Machados, people were giving me information and helping each other out like a family, and everybody was so nice, and I was like, why are they showing me this? What's going on here? <laughs> Why are they so helpful? But I came to soon understand it's like they were helpful because we fought like a team. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody was helping each other out, mm -hmm. you know, and supported each other like a family. And that's what really it's about. So I do believe that our the way I run my academy, we have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. I'm very strict on and we have lots of structure on how we deliver the technique that we have with precision. And not only that, but our instructors are there to adapt and to deal with humans, not machines. That's right. However, we, we, we're, we're like machines when we're given our information, when we're, when we're, 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 when we're programmed. But we, the way we deliver it is very human. Um, I work with my instructors all the time on, on the deliverance of everything that they do, from each word that they speak, how they speak, the inflections in the voice, everything. The psychology, how you stand when you're talking to somebody, um, how close. You know, all these things, because we want to make sure that people are comfortable. Not a, a lot of people have these natural attributes. These are, these are just common sense things in life. But until it's talked about, oh, we don't notice these things. And now we do. Now you're more conscious of it. And then again, it's going to be unconscious again. And you're just going to be natural and a normal human being. But delivering something that's comfortable to other people and delivering it in the best way that they can learn. So they're happy. That's what it's all about. So Having they, fun and being happy. They really helped you in a sense, become a better teacher because it also helps you learn to assess and personality profile each person based on, like you said, their posture, their speech inflections. You can, you can tell when someone's angry or they're not getting it. So it allowed you to develop through your own programs and your own neurological basis or assessments different ways to reach different people that may be experiencing different types of emotional states or like a lot, for example, a lot of times people will come into the gym and they're ready to study, right? Mm -hmm. But then they'll have family problems are going on and you can see it through the technique and you can see their attitude. And so as a teacher, what I'm gathering from, and you can, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is that they taught you to help people as a whole. To come in and, and uh, like for example, you don't just teach people technique and, and do a competition and do it my way. You try to care about the individual. You try to reach them in every area of their lives so that they can become better people and then share that knowledge with someone else. And that is more important than any given system or any given style or any legacy. is helping the human being. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely. I, I, I do agree 100%. And that's what we're all about. That's what we try to do. And not too many people understand that concept in itself. You know, and I believe, it, it, I, can, I can give them, the more connections, neurological connections you can make in life, the more intelligent you're going to be. So if I can show somebody a technique here and how it, how it applies and works, maybe it's a push-pull concept. And we can translate that in other means of life, you know, to get what you want out of, out of children. You know, you can force somebody to do something. But I don't, if you force something in Jiu Jitsu, you're using strength. Yeah. You had that when you walked in the door. I want you to leave here with something, not walk out of the door with what you came with. So I want to teach somebody to do it effortlessly. So I make people, if you, have, if you get something successfully with strength, don't pride yourself. Don't pat yourself in the back. Don't let those juices flow with happiness. Look down upon that. When you get it clean and it's effortless and it felt good, and then now you can pat yourself on the back. Now let those juices of happiness flow about. It hits by itself, Bruce said. Yes, it hits by itself, exactly. Technique overcomes strength, and leverage overcomes technique. Would you agree with that? Say that one more time. Um, <laughs> technique overcomes strength, Yes. and leverage overcomes technique. Yes, but leverage and technique are married. Yeah, yes, they are. <laughs> great answer. That was a great answer. <laughs> What, what kind of advice do you have for the students that, that come in and have never uh, seen Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or, or seen what you do? First, I try to educate them on, on what, it's, um, what it's about, what it looks like, the different positions, why things are effective, what you're trying to achieve in a fight. It's not just a mindless brawl where you have two people fighting and it looks like a cartoon. It's just this cartoon ball and you see a foot come out, a hand come out, some teeth come out, a head come out, and they'll come out, you know, like in the cartoons. Right. Or you can just go downtown on any given weekend and see a mindless brawl like that where people are just trying to punch each other in the head. No, we want to do it more in an intelligent way. We now have a map on winning a fight. 
We don't just aim it at the head. No, we won't even want to exchange firepower. We will, but our objective is to clinch. Jiu-Jitsu in a nutshell, clinch, take the person to the ground, get a superior position, and win the fight, either in a humane way, where you can submit them, allowing them to quit, and law enforcement and military personnel are picking up on this because of lawsuits all around. Now, or finish them off uh, and pummel them if you have to, where you can get in a mount of position, you can hit them and they can hit you. That's what jiu-jitsu is about, where I can hit the person and do damage or allow them to quit, and they can't do anything about it and they can't hit me. That's jiu-jitsu in a nutshell. In a way, it seems more humane in a sense. It's, for example, it in, different, uh, in different spec war fields, they teach... Um, different types of Filipino weapons and things like that where they attack the different artery lines and stuff with knives, for example. But there's a whole other systems out there that teach yes. merely to attack the muscles and ligaments in the arm that are away from the arteries to limit the, mo the motion or the movemental potential for the threat against you because if he can't raise his arm or he can't hold the knife, then the knife's no longer a threat. Yes. So it seems like almost the same theories would apply to jiu-jitsu in a sense that by being able to limit his potentials of attacking you, you're obviously going to be safer, and then perhaps you can even talk to him or de-elevate the situation from taking um, uh, an aggressive nature. In right, a, a gentle exactly. Yeah, basically. exactly. You hit it. And, 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 and that is the important part. The more choices you have in life, yeah. <laughs> the better it's going to be. I don't, I, I, what I want to do in, in winning in jiu-jitsu is limit their options and give myself more choices. <laughs> Just like in life, you know? What do people do? They do the opposite. They limit themselves, they funnel what they can do, and, and it's just like, ah, they feel frustrated and they don't have any options. What I do is I use that funnel opposite. I may feel stuck here, but I know there's so many different options I can do. If I do this, one slight change, changes everything, or can change everything. So, I, 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 so it's the of, same thing, it, it, you, you, you have to be able to adapt. One yeah. slight slice through the hips, I may set up to do a move, but the guy does one little thing, and I have to change my whole routine completely, do something completely different. And you have to be able to see it, adapt to it, and, 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 and feel that. Okay.